What's up, guys? So in economics, we like to use simplistic examples to show complex ideas. And today's the first time we're going to use that method. This video is going to introduce you to the concept of production possibilities. Production possibilities are the alternative combination of goods and services that can possibly be produced with the current available resources over a given period of time. Meaning with all the resources available to us, what type of goods and what quantity of goods could we possibly produce right at this moment? Here's how it works. Let's start with the basics. Scarcity exists. So we can't make everything that everybody needs and wants at any one time. In every society, there are two economic participants who can produce goods and services, firms and government. These two participants have to make choices on what to produce. And with those choices come opportunity costs, which means if they use scarce resources to make one good, they're going to have to give up the ability to make other goods. So they have to choose very carefully what to produce. Producing more of one good has an opportunity cost of what could have been potentially produced of any other good possible. Production possibilities show us what we can produce given our scarce resources and also help us calculate the cost of producing these goods. So let's get started. The function provided gives us the production possibilities for country A. Let's go ahead and call country A, Pretoria. See, Lois, I told you we had allies. Hey, Slobodan, you made it. I didn't know what to bring, so I made coleslaw. It's made out of people. <laughs> Just kidding, hey, is Momar here yet? Pretoria can only produce two goods, sugar and wheat, given the scarce resources available to them. Here's where that simplistic example part comes in. We know in the real world that countries can produce millions of goods and services. But to show the concept of production possibilities and calculating opportunity cost, we're going to assume that the country of Pretoria can only produce two goods. The math could get really crazy with millions of goods. What we know for sure is given this function, these are the various combinations of sugar and wheat that Pretoria can produce, Ceteris Paribus. Wait. Hold up, what did I just say? We got a red alert, people. So Terrace Paribus is an incredibly important term that you need to remember throughout this course. It's a Latin phrase, which quite literally defined means all other things unchanged. So Terrace Paribus is an economic term that is always in effect, always, 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 regardless of the situation, that establishes that the only thing you need to consider as a student is what is currently being discussed. If you ever think to yourself, but what if? Suppose that, let's say that, stop yourself right away. There are a million factors that can come into play. An asteroid can strike the earth. The sun could explode. And this would change the situation completely. With Ceteris Paribus always in effect, you save yourself some sanity. Just consider what's being told to you in the problem and leave everything else out. Good, with that out of the way, let's get back to production possibilities. The function listed gives you six different production possibility combinations of sugar and wheat that Pretoria can produce at any given time. It is only possible for Pretoria to produce at one combination at a time. At combination A, Pretoria can produce 18 units of sugar and no units of wheat. All of its resources are allocated toward sugar production at point A. At point B, they can produce 17 units of sugar and two units of wheat. At point C, they can produce 15 units of sugar and 4 units of wheat. At point D, they can produce 11 units of sugar and 6 units of wheat. At point E, they produce 6 units of sugar and 8 units of wheat. And at point F, they produce no units of sugar and 10 units of wheat. In this case, all resources are shifted towards the production of wheat. Pretoria will choose to produce at one of those combinations based on their social needs, social incentives, and social goals. Meaning, if they want to have more sugar and less wheat, Pretoria will choose to produce at combinations A, B, C, or D. If they want more wheat and less sugar, Pretoria will choose to produce at either combination F or E. Using the function provided, what we can do now is determine the opportunity cost of shifting production from one combination to another. What is the opportunity cost of increasing wheat production at every production possibility for the country of Pretoria? Remember that opportunity cost is what is given up when making a decision. Let's say that Pretoria chooses to shift production from combination A to combination B. In doing so, they would have to decrease their sugar production from 18 units to 17 units in order to gain more wheat. So the opportunity cost of shifting production from combination A to combination B will be one unit of sugar. If Pretoria wanted to shift their production from combination B to combination C, they would be decreasing their sugar production from 17 units of sugar to 15 units of sugar. So the opportunity cost would be two units of sugar. If Pretoria wanted to shift production from combination C to combination D, they would decrease their sugar production from 15 units to 11 units, meaning the opportunity cost would be 4 units of sugar. 
Changing from combination D to E, Pretoria would be decreasing sugar production from 11 units of sugar to 6 units of sugar, and the opportunity cost would be 5 units of sugar. Finally, shifting from combination E to combination F, Pretoria would be decreasing sugar production from 6 units of sugar to no units of sugar at all, meaning that the opportunity cost would be 6 units of sugar. You can see that as Pretoria increases its wheat production every time it changes from one combination to another, it gives up the ability to produce sugar. You only have so many resources available to you. And so, in order to gain wheat, Pretoria must give up sugar. If gaining more wheat is incredibly important to Pretoria's social needs or goals, then this decision is a good one. And losing that sugar would be worth it. <laughs> oh, now I'm sad. But remember that economics uses marginal analysis. So it's important for us to find the marginal cost and marginal benefit of shifting from one production possibility to another. And so we must also find the per unit opportunity cost of increasing wheat production at every production possibility. In order to find the per unit opportunity cost of production, we have to take the units given up and divide it by the units gained. Let's say that Pretoria shifted production from combination A to combination B. In doing so, they decreased sugar production from 18 units to 17 units, but increased wheat production from no units to two units. What this would mean is that Pretoria lost one unit of sugar, but gained two units of wheat. So for every unit of wheat gained, Pretoria lost the potential to produce half a unit of sugar. Let's do another one. If Pretoria shifted production from combination B to combination C, it would decrease sugar production from 17 units to 15 units, but increase wheat production from two units to four units. So in doing so, Pretoria would lose two units of sugar, but gain two units of wheat, meaning for every unit of wheat gained, Pretoria would lose the potential to produce one unit of sugar. In shifting production from combination C to combination D, Pretoria would decrease sugar production from 15 units to 11 units, but it would increase wheat production from 4 units to 6 units. In losing 4 units of sugar, but gaining 2 units of wheat, Pretoria gives up the potential to produce 2 units of sugar. In shifting production from combination D to combination E, Pretoria decreases its sugar production from 11 units to 6 units, but increases its wheat production from 6 units to 8 units. Pretoria gives up 5 units of sugar, but gains 2 units of wheat. So for every unit of wheat gained, Pretoria gives up the potential to produce 2.5 units of sugar. In shifting production from combination E to combination F, Pretoria decreases sugar production from 6 units to 0 units, but increases wheat production from 8 units to 10 units. By losing 6 units of sugar, but gaining 2 units of wheat, for every unit of wheat gained, Pretoria gives up the potential to produce 3 units of sugar. Okay, let's do a little more practice before we finish. Here we have a function that shows us the production possibilities for the United States. Given its current level of resources, the United States can produce two goods, trucks or tanks. Do you recognize this dilemma? This is a classic guns or butter dilemma. You have consumer goods, trucks, and you have military goods, tanks. The United States with its given resources can only produce these two goods and in various combinations listed. They have to carefully choose based on social values and needs which combination they should produce. Ceteris paribus, answer each of the following questions using the production possibility schedule above. Question number one, what is the opportunity cost of moving from combination A to combination B? When moving from combination A to combination B, the United States is decreasing its truck production from 15 trucks to 13 trucks. And so, the opportunity cost of moving from combination A to combination B is two trucks. Question number two, what is the per unit opportunity cost of moving from combination D to combination C? Remember, we're looking at units given up compared to units gained. In this case, the United States may be moving out of war and more towards a post-war economy. So they're going to shift their scarce resources away from military goods and towards consumer goods. When shifting from combination D to combination C, the United States is decreasing its tank production from 6 units to 4 units and is able to reallocate those resources to produce 4 more trucks. If that's the case, then the per unit opportunity cost of moving from combination D to combination C is going to be half a tank per truck. Question number 3. Which production possibility would be allocatively efficient if the United States went to war but sought to keep a minimum quantity of consumer goods in production? Remember that allocative efficiency is defined as producing the optimal amount of goods and services that society needs and wants the most. In this case, the United States needs to defend itself in a time of war, yet wants to keep a minimum quantity of trucks in production. Looking at the production possibility schedule above, the only combination that gives us tank production while also keeping a minimal amount of trucks in production is combination E meaning that this would be the most allocatively efficient combination to produce at in this scenario. Hey, you know what? Let's go to North Korea. We've already talked about how North Korea is a centrally planned economy. Kim Jong-un decides everything. And if there's one thing that Kim Jong-un likes more than guns, it's cheese. Lots of cheese. The following schedule shows the production possibilities for North Korea. 
Given their scarce amount of resources, North Korea can produce two goods, guns and cheese. Answer each of the following questions using the production possibility schedule above. Question number one. What is the opportunity cost of moving from combination B to combination E? It looks like the dear leader is going on another tantrum. He wants to increase gun production at the cost of cheese production. So shifting from combination B to combination E would have an opportunity cost of 9 units of cheese. Question number 2. What is the per unit opportunity cost of moving from combination F to combination C? It looks like Kim Jong-un's tantrum is over, and now he wants more cheese at the expense of gun production. North Korea will increase its cheese production from 0 units to 8 units, and decrease its gun production from 16 units to 4 units. In determining the per unit opportunity cost of shifting production from point F to point C, we end up with 12 over 8, meaning per unit of cheese produced. The opportunity cost is one and a half guns. That's some expensive cheese. Question number three. If Kim Jong-un wants his nation to satisfy his hunger for cheese and military arms nearly equally, which production possibility would be the most allocatively efficient? Again, this decision is going to be defined by North Korea's social goals and values. In this case, because Kim Jong-un is the one who makes all the decisions in this command economy, he wants as close to an equal amount of cheese and guns produced at one time. According to the schedule above, the combination that would be the most allocatively efficient would be point D, where North Korea would produce 8 guns and 5 units of cheese. Okay, it's time for a quick review of today's major points. Whenever determining any economic problem, always remember that Soteris Paribus is always in effect. All other things unchanged, meaning only consider what's in the problem. Nothing else matters. In society, firms and governments are the two participants who produce goods and services. Because scarcity exists, they have choices to make, and those choices have opportunity costs. Production possibilities help show us the alternative combinations of goods and services that governments and firms can produce given their scarce resources. It also helps us to determine the opportunity cost of production. When looking for the opportunity cost of shifting production from one combination to another, we have to look at what is given up in potential production given the scarce resources we have available. Per unit opportunity cost is units given up divided by units gained. And so we take into consideration the potential that could have been produced divided by what we gained when we shift production. Thank you for joining me today. I'll see you next time on Intro to Macro.